Okay, it was a busy day today, uh, November 11th. Had the day off, and I decided to drive the kids out of Manhattan over to Roosevelt Island, and I took the bridge, the Queensboro Bridge, and it was a lot of traffic, and there's always traffic in Manhattan, and it's always pretty hard to get onto the Queensboro Bridge, but once you get on it, you zip across. And there's actually one way to drive into Roosevelt Island, and that is you can't drive straight from Manhattan into Roosevelt Island. You have to go over the bridge into Queens and then sneak around, and you go to this, uh, I guess, 32nd Street, and you cross over from uh, the Queens side on the little drawbridge. That's what we're looking at here right smack into Roosevelt Island and that's where we went and we oh went my. over towards back over to the bridge because that's where the tennis facility is and as we were going over there we saw something interesting there was these firemen and the tramway was just stopped and if you look closely at this picture there's a fireman on top of the tramway and we were like oh my god there's a you know there's a there's a big accident here and the tramway is stuck and there's a fireman trying to get on top of it and we stood there watching, and then it hit me, it hit me, this isn't, and there you can see there's a fireman rappelling, rappelling down the cable to get onto the tramway. And we thought, oh my God, there's something big happening here. But then it hit me, this is a training exercise. The firemen always train to make sure that they can rescue. And I guess because it was a holiday, Veterans Day, only one of the two trams was working, and they were using the other tram to to test on their skills in rescuing people from the tram. Now this tram can hold, I guess, I don't know, 150, maybe 170 people on it, so it gets pretty crowded, so it's important that there are firemen who can come to the rescue. But if you look up there, there's the fireman, and he's rappelling down, and it was a pretty exciting sight. Okay, so when we got back from Queens, and I'm mean, sorry, Roosevelt Island and playing tennis, we were back in the city, and my son and I decided to take a walk, and we decided to go to the Fifth Avenue Apple Store. And we went on 57th Street, and that's what you're looking at here, 57th Street. And my son really loves 57th Street. In particular, he loves 57th Street because he's recently gotten really into like watching really tall buildings that are being built. Particularly, he's very impressed by these really tall uh, residential buildings that are being built. They're called uh, Billionaire Row, where there are these huge, huge buildings. And his favorite is 432 Park Avenue. That's this really mega condo that's being built. Wait, and somehow he got fascinated by it, and that's Park. it here. It so let him uh, tell you a little bit about it. And it is a residential building. It is 1,396 feet tall. When was it built? Um, around 2000. They're finished by the end of the next month. So you can see that they're taking down. How does it compare, compare to the Freedom Tower? The deck is um, uh, 24 feet taller than the Freedom Tower's deck, so, yeah. So it's pretty close in height, right? Yeah. And so it has 120 suites. Each floor is 5,000 square um, uh, feet, and um, it has 95 um, floors in total. Um, actually, the tower loses technically 10 floors because of this th because there's um, 10 floors that is not accessible by anyone so so as it's so thin and of its shape so the wind could pass through kind of so that's why they didn't f fill it in with um, windows 
So we got to the Fifth Avenue Apple Store, and sadly, FAO Schwartz, which used to be right next to it, is no longer there. And we got into the Fifth Avenue Apple Store, and it was packed, packed as usual. And it turns out they actually had iPad Pros in stock. So we tested it out, and we were both very impressed. Here we're um, holding an iPad Pro, and it uh, it's not really that heavy. You know, it's big. It's a 12-inch uh, screen. And it feels, you know, fairly light. I mean, it's not as light as the uh, iPad Air 2. Now, here is my son using the uh, Apple's Pencil. It's an Apple Pencil. Why don't they call it the iPencil? Or, or why don't they call the Apple Watch the iWatch? The iWatch, don't you know? So how, do, how does it compare to other styluses that you've used? How do you like it? Oh, look, it's magnetic. Now that's the cap. That's the charging part. Yeah, it's magnetic. Okay. So you charge it basically. How do you your like Your iPad it charges it for you. Yep. This is the, hold on, you can make, Maybe. now watch this. I don't What is this? That's the keyboard. For what? You want to see how it works? Here, let's get a Word document. Hold on. See how they like to type on it. So we spent a, a, quite a long time. My son was very much into the iPad Pro, and it was, he was playing games on it. He was typing. Here he is. He's typing out a like a phrase or, or basically saying he wants to get this for his birthday. And uh, he was totally enamored with it. Now, he has an iPad mini. He's had the, he had the iPad Mini 2 for quite some time. I have the iPad Air 2. And, you know, he didn't think this was too big. He actually likes the size of it. And he thinks it uh, is a very cool device in terms of, you know, and he really was into the drawing. I was into the drawing, too. I mean, this pen, the big thing about the pen is there's hardly any lag time. And it comes as close as I've ever seen to the feeling of, like, writing actually on paper. And the other big thing is there's no palm, you know, recognition when, you, when you're writing and you press your palm on it. With a lot of styluses, you know, there's this software that tries to have palm rejection. Um, you know, and the, the, the screen is really big. You can, you can do, you know, two apps at the same time. That's the new iOS 9 software. So, you know, I didn't walk out buying one, but I'm very tempted to get one. My son would like one for his birthday. So I'm thinking of holding off and just making that his birthday present. Uh, there we are, again, looking at that beautiful residential tower on the way out of the Apple Store. And we also passed, this is Bloomberg's headquarters, the Bloomberg Company. It's uh, quite a building. It's, it's sort of round, and there's a famous restaurant there, Le Cirque, that's in the uh, bottom of it. So this is on, I guess, 58th Street uh, between 3rd Avenue they and are Lex. And as we were, I guess, heading to 3rd Avenue, we realized that there's this uh, McDonald's store. This is where Casey Neistat actually went there in one of his episodes. This is a McDonald's store where you can customize. It's, a, it's like an upscale McDonald's store where you can customize your burgers and add stuff on it from this like computer terminal um, and just make, you know, put your own kind of cheeses on it put your own kind of breads on it. And I've never seen a McDonald's like this. And um, we didn't do what Casey Neistat did. Casey Neistat, uh, you know, loaded it up with huge amounts of meat and, and other really heavy stuff. Uh, I put some stuff on it, like uh, some, some sort of sauce on it. My son put bacon on it. And, um, you know, it, it all together... You know, my my meal without the uh, without the burger, uh, without without the French fries was like about six or seven dollars, and his was like about ten. So it's not as cheap as you know the traditional McDonald's food, but they have that there too. They have a Happy Meal, and you know here's the fountain dispenser. It's very high tech. It had a greater selection of sodas that I've ever seen before. Like my son likes uh, diet free Sprite, and usually they don't have that in here they actually had diet free sprite so it was kind of a you know a very busy day there's the uh, the bill you can see uh, his came to like a little over ten dollars that's with the drink and the burger and mine you know i had like stuff like shaved parmesan and grilled tomato and um 
you know, and here's what, you know, we had it to go, but we ended up eating it there. There you can check out my uh, my burger and some of the stuff that I put on it. I mean, I got to tell you, it was, it was pretty good. And I think what's going on is McDonald's wants to compete with Shake Shack and other sort of high-end gourmet fast food places. It was yummy. Pretty yummy. <laughs>